Don't worry about the language. Let, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another episode of Muzzy Buzz. For those of you that are new here, my name is Mort and I am the host of Muzzy Buzz as well as the co host of the Mad Mamluks. So if you do like the videos that I'm creating, please consider subscribing and also hitting the bell. So therefore you get notified every time I make a new video or whenever I go live. So with all of that boring stuff out of the way, today I am going to be addressing a video put out by another Christian apologist who goes by the name Al-Fadi, or we like to call him Al-Fadi, which means empty. And in this case, Al-Fadi and Jay Smith are talking about the story in the Quran where Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salam is on the way to go see Queen, the Queen of Sheba and they are about to enter a valley and they, Sulaiman alayhi salam hears an ant tell the other ants to go back in their dwelling so therefore uh, the army of Sulaiman alayhi salam does not trample them. So before we get into their video, um, which I have chopped up for the sake of time, uh, let's provide some context. So they're referring to uh, the story in Surah An-Naml. And so let's go a look and have a look at the verses and then we'll talk about that. So let's have a look. حتى إذا أتوا على واد النمل قالت نملة يا أيها النمل ادخلوا مساكينكم لا يحتمنكم سليمان وجنوده وهم لا يشعرون فتبسم ضاحكا من قولها وقال رب أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن عمل صالحا ترضاه وأدخلني برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين Okay, so this is the two ayat in Surah An-Naml where it says, until when they came upon the valley of the ants, an ant said, O ants, enter your dwellings so that you not be crushed by Suleiman and his soldiers while they perceive not. So Solomon smiled, amused at her speech and said, My Lord, enable me to be grateful for your favor, which you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents and do righteous of which you approve and admit me by your mercy into the ranks of your righteous servants. So this ayah is very clear, basically saying that he was approaching the valley and he heard the uh, female ant or the ant communicating with the other ants to make way for Sulaiman alayhi salam and his army. So now let's hear what al fadi and Jay Smith have to say about this verse. Let's take a look. Can Solomon hear and speak? Is that possible to do so? God and his power can do anything. The difficulty I'm having here is what and how do ants speak? Have you ever heard an ant speak? I mean, if we're talking whales, we know whales make noises. Okay. But ants, I, I don't do know. Do ants speak? Have you ever put I've your ear to the ground? I've never heard anything. Has there ever been any uh, uh, recording of ants speaking? The answer no, is they no. They signal to each other in some way. Or well, fashion. actually, they don't signal. There is a way that ants do communicate. And if you look at any program on ants, go on BBC. In fact, there's some great programs about the ants, enormous amount of programs because they're such industrious little creatures. And they're moving quickly, quickly, quickly. And then they all of a sudden stop. And then they, they right. actually, their heads come together. And what are they doing? They're not talking. Notice what they're doing. They're antennas. They're antennas touching each other. And what are they doing? They're exchanging pheromones, chemical. There's no noise whatsoever. The only noise you're hearing is their feet hitting the ground. And that can be picked up, uh, by, but that's not communication. The communication is the antenna and exchanging chemical pheromones. If that were the case, did, was Solomon given these antenna? Yeah, I mean... Uh, I mean, here's something I'd like to ask Muslims. How would you explain? How did he hear the ants speaking? How was he able to understand what they were saying and be able to smile unless he had uh, either 
had fair ones. I'm not saying it can, it's impossible. I just like to know how this could be, how this was done. We now know today that's not how it happens. It doesn't happen through any, uh, any, uh, any noise or any type of vocal c communication. There is no sound waves. It is all through chemical exchange. Okay, so welcome back. So I obviously took the portion of the clip that I felt was important. Um, but just to give you some idea, in the clip he was saying, well, we just want to start off and say that we believe that God can do anything. So of course, you know, Solomon could hear this if God willed. The problem is that they don't have any sound. We now know that ants don't make any sounds and they communicate through chemicals and not so much of a sound. So before I go and refute that point, but even if you know they don't have sounds, you believe God can do anything, right? So if God willed that Solomon heard something from the ants, that could be very well possible, right? Because God is capable of doing anything, right? Just because it, you don't see it as a natural phenomena doesn't mean that it's, it's impossible for God to do. These are what we call miracles, right? That's the problem you're facing. For example, let's put it in perspective, all right? You believe Jesus walked over water, right? Can you name anything that walks over water? A rock, anything? Nothing walks over water. It's impossible. It doesn't walk over water. Sure, you have little birds that can are able to uh, glide and walk over water for brief moments, but that's only because until the gravity sets in. But generally, gravity pulls everything down, and so it's not really, nothing, no animal walks over water, right? Sure, you can find things floating that have a, a buoyancy that's less than water, or whatever you have, but in general, animals and human beings, you've never seen a human being be able to walk over water, or even an animal. Right? So, why do you accept it? You accept it because you believe it's a miracle. Likewise, even if there was no proof that ants communicated with each other, God could have surely made it happen as an example for Solomon. But, fortunately for the Muslims, alhamdulillah, our book is more advanced than the Bible, and uh, unfortunately, your information is outdated, much like your Bible is outdated, possibly because you haven't done the research. But what do I mean by that? Well, let's go and have a look at what I'm talking about. So have a look at this article beforehand. So, by the way, Jay Smith here is essentially talking about um, how they use chemicals. And let's read here what it says. As explained in an article by Carrie Arnold at Science Now, scientists believe until only recently that ants communicated only through pheromones, for leaving, for example, scent trails behind them for other ants to follow. Hence, the phenom uh, phenomenon of single file marching ants uh, they can all. They can also. Newer research suggests use magnetic and vibrational landmarks to guide themselves around. Now let's go forward. But scientists also noticed recently that some species of ant communicate by making noise as well. You just had to listen really, really close. From observing the ant's behavior, it seemed clear that the sounds served as an alert whenever they were feeling threatened. Mature ant pupae and other, on, uh, on the other hand, despite possessing the same sound-making organs on their bodies, a kind of comb-like protrusion, were believed not to stridulate. The term for when an insect makes noise by rubbing its body parts together like crickets do. But that didn't make sense. Why would they have these organs but not use them? As it turned out, you just had to listen even closer, as Arnold describes it. Uh, Karsten Schonrog, sorry for the mispronunciation, an entomologist at the Center of Ecology and Hydrology, Hydrology Walling, Wallingford in the United Kingdom, thought it odd that mature pupae would have the capability to produce sound but remain silent. So he and his colleagues listened to a group of Myrmica scabronitis ants using an extra sensitive microphone that would pick up on the faint acoustic signals. 
the researchers measured the sounds produced by 10 different uh, scarbonitis larvae, six immature pupae, and six mature pupae, whereas the larvae and immature pupae were completely silent. The mature pupae produced brief pulses of sound. Further analysis of this noise showed that it was a simplified version of the more complex adult sound. It was as if the mature pupae were saying, help, while the adults were saying, hey, I'm over here, please come and help, it's your friend. Embedding the audio files from Science Now article has proved impossible, but you can follow the link here. So essentially, this is the link, which I will post down below. This is the link to the actual sound of the uh, that the ants are making. And he goes on to say in the article, the sounds made by mature ant pupae serve two functions. The research suggests the first, as indicated above, is to signal alarm. Researchers found that fellow ants respond the same way they respond to more complex noises made by adults. The second is, is more strictly social. It helps the ants in a colony identify the pupae as deserving of higher social status than the younger relatives, the larvae who are indeed silent. The scientists found, in fact, that rendering the pupae mute resulted in a significant drop in their social status. It makes sense when we think of our own lives as humans and the sudden elevated status we accord children when they can form complete sentences. Our interactions deepen, we make room for them in the dinner table conversation. So, here we have it in clean and pure science that ants are able to communicate with sound, not just by leaving chemical trails. No, J. Smith, you are completely wrong. Another interesting thing to note here is that in the article, we found out that when the ants communicate, it's almost like a distress signal. And isn't that exactly what the Quran is describing? The ant was warning other ants that they were about to be trampled and was saying, move, hey, get out of the way. And that's kind of similar to what the article was saying when they have these sounds they make that are in the version of like help or even more complicated like, hey, I'm over here, help. So it, essentially they're communicating. So what you've done right now is you essentially have proven the Quran was correct about the ants informing each other of danger. You've made our point for us. Again, the problem is you are so hell-bent on hating Islam that you refuse to even research basic things like this. You have just pretty much proven why the Quran is superior to the Bible. You thought for a long time that, oh, I'm going to get the Muslims. Oh, the ants don't have a language. They can't communicate. Oh, we're so smart. But look now, you feel stupid, don't you? All you had to do was take two minutes to go out and Google something. But rather than doing that, you got into a studio, invested tons of money, thousands of dollars, planned it, traveled, all to look like a moron, all to look like a fool because of your hatred. Do you see where your hatred leaves you? It makes you confused. It actually draws you backward. Instead of researching the issue, you're quoting old science. The Quran already mentioned that the ants could hear. And now we confirm that in science. So what exactly are you talking about? What was your point? The more appalling thing is, if you don't take down this video, Al-Fadi, after this video, you're a coward. And you are disingenuous. It means that you don't care about the truth. You just care about making fun of Muslims and calling people to falsehood. right? You want to call them to something which is not true. Just like you're disseminating false information on your video. So I ask you, just like he asked the Muslims a question, how do you Muslims explain this? Well, we Muslims have just explained it. Now I ask the Christians in return, how do you explain your preachers lying for, for, uh, for the sake of your religion? How do you explain that your Christian preachers are willing to openly lie and that, you, and that you don't hold them accountable? Rather than holding them accountable, you like and share and donate to them so they can continue these fraudulent practices.
All of you intellectual and smart and sincere Christians, think about where you're throwing your money, where you're throwing your support. This is not going to prove Islam wrong by lying. If you have to lie in order to prove your religion correct, it is a false religion. Remember that. Anyways, if you liked the content of this video, make sure that you do subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified every time I make new videos and whenever I go live, which is, by the way, every Sunday at 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure you tune in to our live session. I don't always have a guest, but sometimes I do. So you will just have to keep up to date on my Twitter page and find out what's going on for the live stream. So I appreciate you guys watching this video if you made it to the end, uh, and I appreciate all the support. So until next time, we will see you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Mercy, 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 mercy